be in the heart of the city, in downtown Rochester, New York, where the future awaits you. A place of growth, prosperity, and community. On one hand, Rochester has been a city that's been really steeped in institutional power. We were a city that was Silicon Valley before Silicon Valley. So we're talking about the high-tech companies of their day, companies like Xerox, Bausch & Lomb, and of course, Eastman Kodak Company. In many ways, we were the zenith of the American economy. It's also been a city that is really steeped in the people rising up to fight for social justice. We had the riots of 64 that happened in our community that really leaned on the poor and people of color and people on the margins where they really forced them to have to push their way in for their piece of equity to be able to thrive and survive in our city. History is the greatest teacher. It is important for us to look at everything that we do from the historical context. But unfortunately, we live at a time where people have forgotten this sense of history. Are you Daniel? Yes, sir. Daniel uh, Prude? In the middle of winter, Daniel Prude stopped breathing on our streets. Calm down, okay? What if that was your brother, your father, your uncle? Tragic. Say his name! We had been looking at the history of Rochester. We could see the through lines, that the same challenges that had shown themselves in economic exclusion were the same challenges that were showing up with this man asphyxiated on a dark night in Rochester. We were being called, I think like other cities, to address the structural issues within our institutions and the ways in which power is used and the way in which justice is meted out. How do we lift people out of poverty? How do we center the voices of the right people and make decisions that take us in the direction that we collectively as a community want to go? in the wake of the economic collapse in 2008. I was doing some research and came across a report from the Urban Institute that really described cities that had gone through real economic challenges but had been able to bounce back. And unfortunately, when we read that report, Rochester, New York was at the bottom of the list. We had become a community that was maybe too homogenous in terms of who was making decisions about the community. And at a critical moment, we paused and said, you know what we gotta do though, if we really wanna be successful at this, we gotta tell the truth. And so we said, let's start the conversation there. Let's start it with the people that are gonna have to make some tough decisions. Amen. It was one of the most nerve wracking moments preparing myself to go and talk with the city of Rochester about how they could spend their money differently. Instead of taking the money in, and backfilling budgets, and just trying to strengthen our own balance sheets, let's try to strengthen the people in this community. Far from resistance and unwillingness to engage on equitable and inclusive recovery, it was quite the opposite. That The mayor, the county executive, the budget directors, all said, how can we help? We now have these programs that we know that might work, but we can move money towards it. It's, it's absolutely good. important that equity be the primary lens that we look at. Otherwise, we're just gonna make the same mistakes of the past, and that's never gonna be acceptable. There's an opening of the eyes that just changes you. Mayor Malik Evans unveiled his first city budget as mayor for the 2022-23 fiscal year in it economic empowerment. It was crystal clear that collaboration and partnership must be at the center of what we do. And thanks to the American Rescue Plan, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity in the form of hundreds of millions of dollars to take Rochester to the next level.
would buy the block were building single family homes, giving people an opportunity for home ownership. And there was $13 million allocation. We have to build in inclusive recovery. We have to put equity at the forefront of the decisions we make. And so we have a lot of different tools to do that now. I was born in Puerto Rico and when I turned two, my mom brought us to Rochester, New York, and since then we were raised here. We did a lot of moving, but <laughs> majority of the time I was mostly in Rochester. I always wanted a house. My family, my mom always rented. I just never grew up in a family home. And I didn't want the same thing for my daughter. I found out about By the Block in April, and so I decided to go to the open houses that they had on Thomas Street. I thought it was going to be difficult to have a real estate agent, having to have a lawyer look into the bank process. But they were like, let's get this going. They basically told me that by the summertime, say July, I would be finding out if I got chosen. How was school to? It was fine. We had to sub in all our classes. Why? Miss Merle wasn't here. Fourth period, we had Mr. He was there. Soila? Yes. So there's the guy recording. I got chosen, and I actually was chosen for my first choice house. The day I closed, I remember <laughs> that like as if it were yesterday. My daughter was the one to put the key in the lock and open the door. And from there on out, you know, I looked at her and basically said, this was ours and we're here. I'm actually the first one to purchase a home out of my siblings. I lost my mom in 2014 and I really wish she was here to see this. And my siblings tell me, you know, your mom's proud of you. She sees your accomplishments and everything. You've done so much for yourself. I'm, I'm happy for this house and what I've gone through to get it. We look forward to the data to demonstrate that this is something that can be a long-term investment, hopefully, by multiple partners. This is a major, major investment into neighborhoods. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. The city set aside $2.2 million for the Guaranteed Basic Income Pilot as a supplement to partner with people, to come alongside of them and give people a chance. My boyfriend has a moving company and we are actually in the middle of doing a move. It's not like a nine to five where you're guaranteed a certain paycheck at the end of the week. If people are moving, then we have business. If not, then we don't. I'm part of a big family. We have generations in our house. We're actually about to be first time grandparents, which has been exciting and challenging in itself. We get by. We survive, however, money is kind of tight. The individuals that get into this pilot, data has shown that people use these dollars for upward economic mobility, that they use it to save for a down payment for a house or to buy a new car to allow them to be able to get for work. I applied for the program. A couple weeks later, I got an email and a call back.
One of the questions that we asked her as well as all the participants are, what are your goals with this extra $500 a month? So she said that her goals would be to buy a car and get into a bigger place. My hope is that everyone gets themselves together financially and gets back on their feet and back on track. It's definitely been a help just having that card that I can order Uber on when I know she had an appointment we didn't plan for. It's been a true blessing. And only having a year with the program, it's enough time for you to make a difference for yourself. They give you these funds by way of electronic transfer once a month. A great thing was if you don't have a bank account, they actually help you get a bank account. Just being able to pay a bill and not worry about a meal next week. Meal or bill. We have more time to enjoy each other without stressing about financial issues. What you say? At first, they didn't believe it. People wasn't even coming to the interviews because they're like, oh, this is money we have to pay back. And we're like, no, this is your money to do whatever they want. So they are getting ready to induce Clara. She's having her first baby. Hey. Had a great grand boy. Yeah. In September, I plan to have a ride be shuttling my grandbaby around. <laughs> the way to the hospital with your niece. We were looking at really kind of reframing how you engage people of color. And so programs like the Guaranteed Basic Income Pilot Program, we're going to really dismantle those dominant structures and really trust people. Thank you. See them for who they are, um, hold their humanity and not harm them systemically. Once you reconnect yourself, you can't go back to doing things the way you used to do them.